business in general can feel very comfortable about what a Labour government would do. Now, the whole question of wargaming, I'm not sure that's the right terminology that should be used, but if it's a question about uh, a government that is preparing for a whole host of different options, it just demonstrates to me that they are on top of their game. But if you're a business and you're hearing higher corporation tax, excess earnings tax, nationalisation, property tax, you can't be sitting there as a company boss saying, whoa, come on in Labour, can you? The idea of putting corporation tax up would only bring us up to the levels that uh, these multinational companies pay in, in other European countries. Big business doesn't have anything to fear. All big business has got to recognise is they may have to pay their fair share. They've got away with it for long enough. The reality is the creation of wealth in our nation is still as high as it's ever been. The distribution of that wealth is what's wrong. A Labour government is on the side of ordinary working people and would redistribute that wealth, but it wouldn't take the wealth away from businesses. Is it just about tax of though? Of course is it, it is. Of course it's about tax. But it's Amazon could pay lots and lots more tax, but it would still be taking business away from all the small businesses, your members, that you'd like to support. I, but that's a, that's a different argument. I'm not a King Canute. I can't stop the nature of large companies. You'll be asking me next, do I want to break up supermarkets in order to save the local uh, corner shop? The reality is... The, is that the such an odd of... thing then to ask? No, because... I, I, I'd love there to be more local shops, but I, I don't have a magic wand. Let me talk about the makeup of your party now. Len, you said yesterday there's no dissent at this conference and it got a big cheer. There has been dissent in the past, hasn't there? The party now seems to me to be more united than I've ever known. I've often been in the minority in, in my party. I've been a member of it for 47 years, but you argue your corner. At the moment, I see absolute unity mm. everywhere. There's a lot of talent, isn't there, on the back benches yeah. as well as the front. Rachel Rees, Chuck Muna, the advisors like Peter Mandelson, would they be welcome back? Should Jeremy Corbyn say, you know what, you're welcome into the fold, you get jobs? Well, of course, there's a fantastic amount of talent currently on the front benches and in the shadow cabinet. Is that I, a no, then? I, uh, no, it isn't. I don't, pick, I don't pick Jeremy's team. And the truth is, all of us have to live with the consequences of our actions. I've had to live with that all my life within the Labour Party. And so uh, some of the parliamentary Labour Party and some of the leading lights who resigned and were part of that kind of attempt to undermine Corbyn shouldn't be surprised if there isn't suddenly a desperate wish to fall over to drag them back in. But of course they have a role to play. Tom Watson, your former roommate, does he have to pay the price? Um, I'm not sure why he engaged in the undermining. He obviously felt that uh, Jeremy was um, w was a problem, and he's got to work that out with Jeremy. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Tom's a talented guy, uh, but, but he has you see to work it as it out. undermining rather than as an assertion of a different view. Well, it That's was at that time. No, it was at that time. You know, look, let's. Let, let's be honest with, with everybody. Last time, last when there was a, a, the coup was happening every other week, when there was mass resignations, when there was votes of no confidence, uh, those issues have to be worked through. And people have, and lots have. The Parliamentary Labour Party in general now are massively uh, supportive of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, and uh, things need to find their level. And time's a great healer. Israel shouldn't be treated differently to white South Africans or Nazis. Um, should the person who said that at a Labour fringe meeting last night have the right to express that view? I, I, if they're members of the Labour Party and they've engaged in uh, language that is considered to be either anti-Semitic or uh, in any other shape or form racist, then they should have no place in the Labour Party. Do you recognise that Labour may still have a problem no, with anti-Semitism? No, I've never, I've never recognised that. I believe it was mood music that was created by people who were trying to undermine Jeremy Corbyn. Should Ken Livingston, uh, in that case, be brought back into the fold? No, uh, the Labour Party are dealing with Ken. I think Ken's comments were extraordinary. I expressed that view at the time. And the Labour Party have dealt with Ken. You've noticed this. Other people on the floor have talked about it. There is a sense this week of a government in waiting. What would be your bet on the earliest for a general election? If I was a betting man, early 2019. Not before then? I don't think so. We've only got 12 months, remember, for this deal. 
October of next year, we've got to have cut a deal on Brexit. I just don't know how this government are going to do it. I think she might trundle through to that, but I think it'll unravel in the House of Commons. I think she'll resign, and I think, I hope, we'll have another general election so we can give Britain a Labour government that they desperately need. Lynn McCluskey, many thanks.